it going YouTube welcome to the shop Thomas here uh, today I'm gonna be building a Linux computer got a behind me I've got a bunch of hardware I'm gonna put this together um, as far as hardware um, wanted to wanted to say one thing about the uh, some of the hardware actually um, the the case I'm using is actually the case from my old computer um, I don't recommend this case it's a uh, cooler master n 400 it didn't even last a year for the uh, uh, the switch the, the actual uh, switch died on it uh, which is kind of ridiculous um, in fact that uh, I just uh, just realized I still actually have to replace the switch on it but and it's sitting right here um, but and the the other the other thing that uh, that I didn't like about this um, computer or the, the case is the uh, the uh, the motherboard uh, the case is so tight. Um, I, I, I'm using an Asus motherboard and it has uh, in the back on it where you actually plug everything in. It has this little uh, uh, like a decal panel that snaps into uh, into the back. Uh, you can't use it with this. Um, in fact, you can't even put all the screws in the uh, motherboard because of the way it's set up. It's 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 so tight. Um, it, it it's just I, I I don't I don't like it. Um, but it is what it is. It's you know it's 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 uh, still usable case. I'm gonna like I said I, I still actually have to replace the button. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, yeah, it is what it is. So as far as parts. Um, this is uh, I know it's a Linux computer um, but I, I it's gonna be a backup also it's not just something for me to play with um, one cool thing about uh, uh, Linux is or I should say one cool thing about the video editing software that I use is DaVinci Resolve but they have a, a Linux version so my hopes is that I can use it as a backup in case my computer crashes again or or whatever and the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, some people when they hear some of the uh, hardware that I'm putting <laughs> putting in this thing they might be wondering why I'm using it like I, I have an i7 and I'm uh, 32 gigs of, uh, of RAM and I'm also using a uh, Corsair MP510 um, it's it's a pretty fast uh, NVMe uh, SSD drive um, and has pretty good specs um, and I'll I, and I'll post all those uh, links to all this stuff in the description below. So I said I'm using Corsair uh, uh, SSD. I'm also using Corsair Vengeance uh, RAM and I already mentioned the Asus. It's a Z390 motherboard and Noctua Noctuo. I think that's how you say it. Uh, cooling fan for the processor, uh, a Cooler Master power supply, and I—I uh, I don't know if I already said it or not, but Red Dragon uh, keyboard. It's, uh, it's a pretty nice keyboard. Um, it's a—it's a lit keyboard. It's aluminum. Uh, it has mechanical uh, uh, keys. I, I don't like. That's the only keys I, 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 I keyboards I ever use is mechanical. Uh, my other uh, computer has a Corsair. It's super nice. I love that thing, but it's also like many times more expensive than this. So you know, it is what it is. It's still pretty nice. Uh, I played with it a little bit. The only thing that I don't like about it, and it's not that big of a deal for me, is because I've been using mechanical keyboards for so long. But it, the Red Dragon is a wee bit on the loud side, um, and it and they're supposed to be uh, uh, Cherry MX. Um, switches, I, I don't know, they might be, but uh, the ones in the Corsair Cherry MX and they feel different and they're much more fast. Uh, so it is, yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure it's different. Almost forgot one thing, I'm going to be using a Kensington Expert Trackball mouse, or I guess it's a mouse. Anyways, I, I, if you haven't used the trackball, uh, you should try Kensington. They're really awesome. That expert one is just freaking amazing. And I will say this: if you use CAD, 
you can do the cool thing about that particular track ball since it's on top and it's quite large you can use two fingers and go to in two different planes at once it's freaking awesome highly recommend it just wanted to put it out there I think I touched on it earlier but you know um, if, if, if you're just building and, and it doesn't matter if it's Windows or Linux if you're just building a, a computer uh, not necessarily you know if you're not doing it for games or high graphic intense like video editing um, you could totally get away with doing this a much much less expensive you could get an i3 or even uh, an i5 instead of an i7. You could get an AMD and get the corresponding uh, motherboard. You get less RAM. Um, I, I, I still would recommend probably this um, hard drive. Um, and, I, and I haven't actually used this hard drive yet. I'm just going by specs and price. Um, you know, for the <laughs> for the money, it's just it's and you know what it does is quite amazing and I'll have all these specs put up um, and as far as like mechanical keyboards uh, this is just an incredible price just an incredible price you know um, I, I would not buy another Cooler Master power supply just because you can get the same wattage with the same kind of build quality for cheaper from other brands I don't even remember why I got that to be honest with you same thing with them with the mouse, the expert mouse here by Kensington, I just like it. It is just if you just haven't used it, you just don't know. And the uh, I would, I, I this is the first time I'm using a Noctuo um, cooler of any type or fan of any type. But I'm telling you, I've already taken it in a box just to look at it and stuff. I'm sold. Uh, the packaging is just amazing. Uh, the fit and finish of everything, uh, the attention to detail of everything, uh, it's just amazing. Six year warranty, it's that's awesome. Oh yeah, I wanted to say the the warranty on the uh, the 510 is five years. That's that's pretty awesome. Pretty pretty awesome. Um, I wanted to say uh, something about the uh, I'm I'm gonna put a heat sink on the uh, on the uh, 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 the SSD. Um, but I've noticed it well I mean it all depends on you know your case that you're building this in and you know if you're using a graphics GPU and stuff like that um, this is a five millimeter tall uh, 2280 um, there's three millimeter and ten millimeter and there's also some that have built-in fans and stuff um, I don't think the fans are probably necessarily necessary at least not for what I'm doing um, but I do think it's probably a good idea to have one and they're, they're, they're cheap too and I'll have links to a couple different three or four different uh, ones of these all right I think that's the all for the overview um, gonna go ahead and kind of clear this out but before that um, uh, I want to kind of show you this here uh, keyboard and get it open. This is my uh, first Red Dragon product, and I've already had it out playing with it. <clears throat> get out of there! Wires making it kind of stuck in there. It is backlit. which is really, really nice. Um, it does have a, a I thought that was, I don't know. It has a really good feel. It doesn't feel really cheap. And you can kind of hear the, the buttons. They're a little louder, but you know, I just, I, I don't know. Like I said, for the money, I think this is a bargain. It's, uh, yeah, pretty darn nice. Nice long cord, too. I wish, uh, one thing it did have, I wish it had a pass-through, USB pass-through, so you could, you know, if you had a mouse or whatever, you could just pass it right through. But, no worries. Very nice. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and get this cleared up, and then, uh, 
get it set up to where we start putting this stuff together. Be back. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put in the power supply, which is pretty simple. Just slides right in. On, on this one, the fan goes down. Slide it in. And we'll secure it with uh, four screws on the back here. You need to get all your wires kind of pulled out to the sides so we can get the motherboard in. And like I said, if you're using a, <laughs> a case like this, it's going to be kind of tight. So take your time. Now if you'll notice, uh, this thing's actually supposed to be on the back here, but like I said, I, I can't get the, the, the board in the chassis here with that on, and I won't be able to get some of these uh, um, um, <laughs> what am I trying to say, uh, bolts in, nuts in, screws in, whatever. Just kind of sits in there like that. You can kind of see through the holes where they, where the uh, screws go, and just secure them down with uh, some screws. If I can find where I put my screws at. Don't know which ones they are. <laughs> Be nice if they would uh, put cutouts for screwdrivers so you can get in there better. I know some some case manufacturers do that. That's it's a very nice uh, uh, thing there if they when they do that. Yeah, I might actually be able to get that last one in. Maybe. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna actually put in the um, the SSD drive. Um, but before we put the SSD drive in, we're going to um, put the little heat sink on it. So. I'm still marveling at uh, the size of these drives. It's just, <laughs> uh, it's just amazing to me.
pulling off the little sticker on the back. And then to expose the, the little modules. And that's to help transfer the uh, uh, the heat for the thermal pad on the heat sink. So it comes with two little rubber bands and a little silicon blue usually pad, thermal transfer pad. Just kind of squeeze it on there a little tiny bit and then use your little rubber bands and get them open. <laughs> Easier said than done. Just like that. Take the little screw out. Try not to lose it, it's tiny. <laughs> very, very tiny. I just love these drives. I just wish they would come out with, you know, a four terabyte. This is one of the best priced ones, uh, M2s like this though. It's, it's, I just, like I said, I've never used a Corsair drive. I've used their, their RAM many a time. So as long, you know, if it holds up like their RAM, I'll be very, very, very happy. And I guess the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, put in the processor. Alright, I wanted to show you something. Um, if you look right here in this corner, there's a little triangle um, on the processor. There's a little triangle. And also up here on either side, uh, actually let me open it up, um, there's little tabs. You see the little cuts? So it only goes in one way, so you got to be careful when you do this. Um, but if you just pay attention to the little cuts and a little arrow and stuff, it's pretty simple. So basically you're going to open up the little clamshell, put it aside real quick, push down on that, pull it open, take it back, Gonna open it up, take out your processor, and try not to touch the bottom. I just put it in there just like such. Just lay it on there. Oops, didn't mean to slam it. You want to get it back on that uh, underneath that screw, and it just popped off just like it's supposed to. And uh, there you go. It's in there just like it's supposed to be. And then we're gonna put. Yeah, it's pretty shiny, isn't it? Uh, but uh, then we're gonna um, uh, next. Well, I was about to say the next thing we're gonna do is put the fan on, but we're gonna we're gonna actually uh, put the RAM in next, and then we're gonna put the fan in because it's just a little easier to get these things in there. All right, 
hang on. One thing you'll notice too is right above the ram here, it'll it'll tell you the dim where the sockets are. So you got B1, B2, A1, A2. You want to put in A1 and B1. And they only go in one direction, so be careful. <laughs> so these things are expensive. I like the little, uh, the built-in uh, 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 aluminum uh, heat sink. It's pretty nice. So, uh, which way is which? No, nope. goes this way, right? Yeah. Okay. So we'll put in A one. Just push it down until it locks. Alrighty. And oh boy, what before I forget that little plastic thing that comes off your processor, you want to keep that in case you have to send that board off to uh, uh, to be fixed or something. All right, it's about time to put the, the CPU cooler on, but I wanted, <laughs> I wanted you to see this packaging. Sorry for the glare and stuff, but uh, uh, I just, you know, this is just an awesome way to do it. There's no, no plastic in it, and yet it's completely secured. I mean, I think more people need to start doing it like this. It's just, if I can get my finger in nut, it's just an awesome, an awesome packaging. I mean, is that not stellar? I mean, it's just awesome. I mean, just folds out really nice and sweet. Uh, it's just lots and lots of tension to detail. I, I, I really like it. And another thing I kind of like too is they added some uh, thermal compound. I noticed. Their own branded thermal compound is pretty awesome. So you don't have to buy them if you don't have it. Oh, and I didn't notice that you get a pin too or a sticker. You can stick on the on your computer, I guess, if you wanted to. It's a metal sticker, by the way. This is pretty awesome. Looks like there's some spare wire clips. That's just, that's awesome. And a uh, little noise adapter. I'm not sure what that is. I don't want to throw it away because I don't know what it is yet. But, yeah, that's nice. This is another neat thing. Even has a, a an actual screwdriver, and it's actually not too bad. Come in handy. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pull all the rest of this stuff out. This is just mounting hardware, and uh, we'll get started on that. One thing I wanted to point out is they have actually instruction manuals for various different processors that this will work on so obviously make sure you have the right one but um, um, yeah so that makes that a lot nicer and they're, and they're really incredibly detailed so another another attention to detail thing here it's awesome okay so we're gonna have to put this back plate on which is a big deal uh, the other side comes off as such, so we can just put it right through the holes. This, I have it backwards. Yeah, I have it backwards. Only goes one way. There's three holes there. Three holes there. So just as such.
hold on to that thing so it doesn't come out. And then there's uh, a bag of goodies. You want to open that up. It's the one with the black, four black plastic spacers. And we're going to put those spacers on. Kind of over that. You have actually uh, two sets of bars, but we're going to take the big bars. And uh, let's see, we want to orientate which way. Uh, you, you, you can put it on either way. But you got to figure out which way you want to orientate your fan. And I want my fan to go this way, I think. Or should I go that way? Want that, but you want that part facing the outside, so like that. As such. And I'm going I'm to have to actually push them from the outside, so from the back side, so. I'll lift this back up a little bit, just like that. Fitting the damn thing again. What orientation did I decide on? I guess I'm gonna go uh, this direction. Then you're going to take your little nut as such, if it'll focus. Maybe. There it goes. And you're going to tighten it down. And you, you know these little bars actually have three different little positioning tabs on them so you know it, it really depends on I guess your uh, footprint and everything get the little extra torque down kind of got ahead of myself earlier um, when you get this thing out of the box there's actually a little piece of cardboard in there and I, I had already taken it out but uh, you need to take the fan out so you can tighten this thing down and that's pretty simple really a little wire in the back you just pop it over well it's easier said than done but there you go just like that Pull it over. Try to be gentle. Just try to be gentle because I don't want to, you know, bend the thing, but get it out. It's a lot easier to mount. Obviously, you got to take that off and put some uh, heat uh, transfer compound on that instead. A little dab. Maybe. All right, and take that little plastic cover thing off. I really like the even chromed the tubes because uh, my Cooler Master they didn't bother to chrome the tubes on it. Which isn't really a big deal, but um, it just corrodes and stuff over time. Okay, so. You got it. I like the little screwdriver. And 
as far as tightening these things, you don't want to over tighten it. Obviously, this is a CPU, so um, but you want to tighten them down till they stop. So I'm just doing a little on each side, and then I'm, as soon as I feel any tension, I'm going to stop. fan back in just got to be very gentle That's it. And plug in the fan. Hopefully. All right. That's in. cable still to do and that's about it okay uh, some of you may notice that I haven't put a GPU or a graphics processor in here um, I'm not going to I'm gonna try to see how well the onboard one does as an actual display port so we'll see how well it does if it you know if, it, if I don't like it I'll get one at that point um, really the only thing left is to finish plugging everything in uh, one thing I noticed on this one, this is the Z390 versus my older one is the Z370. Is this one came with a little thermistor probe that you can actually plug in to get you know better readings, which is pretty awesome. I'm just going to stick that back in there. And uh, the only thing we really have to do is just uh, I got a couple more fans in there and a the power supply and uh, USB and audio and power switch reset and all that stuff so let's get to it so we're gonna i'm gonna put it in all the smaller stuff first you know these little header pins right here are really can be really hard to to see i have a hard time seeing these power lid okay You gotta be really careful too not to bend them. So just go slow and take your time. One thing I don't like about these smaller cases, as I've already said, that's you know there's just not as much room to do what you need to do. Where's the audio? Here's the audio. USB oh, audio. B3 Gen 1 in one. Um, just in case you're a little lost on where what goes where 
who, what, when, and all that stuff. Just look at your uh, your manual that came with the board. It'll actually tell you everything you need to know, where where everything goes. I think that was it. I don't like that thing being like that right there, though. Oh, no, that's not it. I got got to put some power to uh, to the board. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put that on that side. And that'll help keep that away from there. Alright, um, apparently, um, when I was putting together the board, <laughs> uh, the ST guard got full, and I didn't notice it until I started uh, looking through the uh, video footage. So you didn't get to see a couple things. Um, the, the, one of the most important things you didn't get to see is, like, uh, I, you saw that I put the 24-pin power cable in, but you didn't see that uh, there's also a 10 pin CPU power cable that needs to be plugged in from the power supply up to the header right here. Um, and one more thing, I, uh, I got ahead of myself and I put the high definition audio on where the speaker goes, the little tiny speaker right here. So I swapped those. Um, other than that, you know, it's all the same. But, th what, but the thing is, if you, <laughs> if you don't put the CPU power cable in, um, the CPU literally doesn't get any power. So what happens is that when you when you go to power it on, you know, like you can see the red light back there, it'll it'll come on and, and maybe one fan will come on, but that's it. You can't boot it or nothing. So um, you know, make sure. Uh, and it also depends on your board. But I mean, I'm pretty sure most most modern boards have two power cables now. Um, uh, yeah, that's it.